Hi, I'm looking at a Tiguan today. This one has a fault, engine lights on. So I scanned the fault code, so I'll show you what I've come up with. P242A, and it says exhaust gas temperature sensor, circuit bank one, sensor three. There's only one bank, so it's gonna be the third sensor. I'll see if it is erasable, but. So it can go, it may be an intermittent then, let's try that again. No, it's straight pack. So it says it's erased, but it's it's not, it's right there, it's static. It's active. It cannot erase the code. So what I'll do is do some checks. It says it's gone. Go straight into it. It's back. What we're going to do is see which one of these, there's exhaust sensors, there's one here. This one is below the catalyst, before the DPF, and we've got two at the back, one before the DPF, no, one before the catalyst and one after the DPF. So we don't know which one it is, so what I'm going to do is come into the live data. I've got three of these up, temperature upstream of the turbo, so that'll be up about here, upstream of the particulate filter. And this one is the um, upstream of the catalyst. That one stands out because the engine's cold. So that's a false reading. I'm not sure which one it is, so what I'm going to do is undo these and see which one changes it. It's easier with two hands. One sec. That's it unplugged. Now this one's gone to 930. So I'm going to put that back in. It says it's already been replaced once because it's not the same color. Now it's gone back to six. Now I've got a black one here. Let's unplug that. That's unplugged enough. There. That's unplugged. I don't see that one change. That might be one that I've not got into here. The black one. It's 13. Now I'm, now I'm back in. There's a brown one at the back. Down there. Need to check that one. See it down there? Right there. When I unplug this one, the brown one, there's no change, so I'm going to go for the brown one. We can do some checks on that and see if we can get this to change. First of all, we can check it for power and ground here. Got zero volts on one, 3.2 on the other, which is about right. Zero volts lit up green, which means it's got a ground. It's lighting an LED, not a test light, but gives us an idea we've got power and ground. Should be five volts, but it's usually a bit lower because it's a temperature sensor. It just looks like it's lower because this pulls it down a little bit. We use a little bit of uh, voltage because this is acting a bit like a very high resistor and pulling that voltage down a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is put a resistor into here and see if we can get that to change. I've got this going into the wires on that plug. That's the car's wiring harness side on the one that was up at, I think it was 900. Now I've got it down to 12 by dialing in 200 and 10 ohms and that's brought it right down there so that looks like now can we erase the fault code we've definitely got one that's affected it so we know we're on the right wire we know the wires are okay there let's see now if we can change it uh, triple codes they've unplugged others so we're gonna see more of these so let's see if we can now erase it says it's gone it did before though so now what we have to do is read it again make sure it's gone it's gone now when I read it again it's gone so we could see what the voltage is on there I suppose the one that it's happy with oh gosh that was 0.5 my hands are shaking see 0.5 so at 0.5 of a volt it's happy we know it's gonna fix it so we've tested it so we've tested it we've not guessed test don't guess 0.5 of a volt. 
it's the only way it can erase it. So we know now that if we get a new sensor, it's going to work. And we know if we follow this wire, that it's this one right here, right down there. So I'm going to go and get one and fit it and try that out. That's really tight down there, so I'm going to spray it with some of this freeze. It goes down to minus 35. See if that makes it come loose. And give that a minute and see if it helps it come out. That's definitely helped loosen this, giving it a few minutes. It's turning out no bother at all now. It's just I can't quite get my fingers down there enough to take it the rest of the way. But once I get it out, I'll change, put the new one in, and check that there's no fault codes again. So there's the new one. And the old one is the one with the brown plug. The scan tool called it Sensor 3. That's the part number for anybody that wants to know. Sensor 3, the brown one at the front of the DPF right here. Comes with a sachet of grease as well. I'll just try and get that in there. It looks like it's going to start to rain, so I'll just get this done and then check for faults. That's the new sensor fitted and on there we've got the point zero point five that it was happy at before. We'll check for fault codes again just in case. I'm not using the resistor. We are using uh, the the actual sensor now instead. So I'll take that off. Don't know why it's doing that. Passive sporadic. So we'll erase that. We'll check for the code again, but last time I had to come back into it here. No code. I think I'll start the car and check it's not there again. Because I want to be sure it's gone. Before it wouldn't let me erase it. I've come right out of it. I'm not using this at all. That's just still there. So, let me put these away. That one has to go back into the back. And this way we know, we've tested, we didn't just guess. Although, to be fair, you could have done a code read and if you knew which sensor 3 was, which is the brown one in this case, which I found out, if you knew that, you could have just changed it and you would have been right. But it's better to test it first. Okay, let's start the car and see if it's okay.